Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. Today, we are going to talk about our most recent studio updates. That's right. Shaper Studio is our simplified design tool for craftspeople, and we're updating it all the time. So we've got five really cool new features we're going to talk to you about today, and we're going to do two projects with those. Yeah, we'll put them to action. All right. Uh, you know, for everybody who's new to Shaper Sessions, thanks for joining. As Welcome. always, this is our live demo of the Shaper system, origin, studio, trace, plate, workstation, etc. All the things. And, you know, we love hearing from you all in the chat. So please, right away, uh, we read everything after the show. We especially love your questions. So we have Ted in the chat today. He's going to be answering your questions live as we go. And then also, any questions that we could do a demo on yeah we'll do that demo live at the end of the show so this is your opportunity to get your questions answered today all right um let's just get started because we got a lot to cover yeah so we've got the studio update it's actually been out since june but we've had so much to talk about <laughs> it that been. it's taken us this long to get around to it yeah um and we've got five things that we're going to cover today i'm just going to look over at the list here because there's a lot we've got custom anchors which is huge. Biggest yep. one first, right off the top. We've got mirroring, both horizontally and vertically. We've got a selection manager, which is going to help you select the things that you want on the screen more easily. We've got this really cool zoom to fit button that helps prevent you from losing what you're working on off the screen. So yeah. I love that one. And then we've got some updates to mobile selection that we're going to talk about. So cool. we've got a tenon that we're going to cut. For tenons, we love custom anchors. I'm going to show you first custom anchors, yeah. and then we'll do that zoom to fit and mobile selection before on the top half of the show. Perfect. And of course, we're going to cut the tenon. And we're going to cut the tenon, right. So um, yeah, I mean, let's dive into it. We've got Studio up here on my laptop, so we can pull that up. Here we are. Um, Shaper Studio, tenon demo. Um, if you are new to Shaper Studio, we've got some very basic shows on it that you could go back to after watching this show. We're going to breeze through a lot of the more simple features and just show you what's new today. So we're in design mode, which is where we draw things. And let's take a look at what's changed about this menu. The most important thing is down here, add origin anchor. And we're going to click here to turn that on. You can see we've got this little red triangle at zero, zero. And the custom anchor is always going to live at zero, zero. I turn that on first because we're going to build our tenon off of that. We're going to use this as a reference point for all of our geometry and build based on that. You can see I've got a lot of features turned on here that I also don't typically use. Uh, I've got smart alignment. I'm actually going to turn that off. That snaps shapes that I draw to other shapes. I don't want that. I'm going to primarily snap to the grid today. And because I'm going to do that, I set this grid to 0.25 inches, a quarter inch, which relates to the geometry of this tenant, which what was the dimension on that, Jake? Two and a half by one and a half? Two and a half by one and a half. And so that's where we're going to start. So let's start by drawing what I would call just a guide rectangle to represent our stock. Let's make that two and a half inches wide and one and a half inches tall. Perfect. And I can just drag that around. See how it's snapping to the grid there? That's going to snap exactly where I want it with the custom anchor on the upper left. Now, that's important because that relates to how we have set the part up in Workstation. It's up against those left vertical alignment pins. And we've got the reference face clamp. We're going to grid off the reference face and the face that's against the vertical alignment pins. So that's that top corner right there. You want to use your custom anchor and those reference faces all together. OK, so we've got this kind of bounding box that I'm working in. We're going to make a tenon. And let's just say we want this to be uh, an asymmetric tenon. That's why we really need this custom anchor to be in the right place. So let's make another rectangle. Let's make this one. Let's make this 0.75 inches tall and one inch wide. What do you think about that? Let's make this a little bit wider even, Jake. Let's make Sounds this one good. and a quarter. This is all kind of off the cuff here. We don't want to change that shape. We want to drag that till it snaps. So you can see that this is all aligned with the grid. We've got this tenon that is, uh, that is spaced tastefully, art, uh, asymmetrically in this stock. 
And you know, the one thing that I forgot that I wanted to do to this, because we want to make the mortise, is make that a rounded rectangle. Yep. So we're actually going to take that. We want to make not just any old rectangle. We want to make a rounded rectangle. Copy that. 1.25. 0 0.75. And then for the radius on this, let's make that a quarter inch radius. There we go. And we can drag that right there. Select until you can select what you want. You know, I was going to do that selection manager demo later, but you know, now that we've got a couple shapes overlapping, this would be a great time to do it. Do it we'll twice. come back to this a couple of times. I'm going to drag to select everything. Now, this is a new thing. We've got two new things up here. I'm going to focus on the selection manager first. We've got manage selection. See, it says three. And now this is new. You can see we've got three different shapes that are being highlighted as I roll over each of these. I'm going to deselect that tenon. I'm going to deselect that bounding box because I want to keep those. And all that's left selected in blue is that mistake rectangle. I'm going to take that. And now that that's selected, I can just hit delete. That made it so easy to choose that. And we're going to do that a bunch through the show. I know that was kind of quick. Um, we're going to do that a couple of times. OK, so now I've got this shape. There's one more thing that I want to do. And that's because what I want to do today is show off something that we've done before, which is shape shifting that clearance pocket for this tenant, yes. right? And to do that, you know, when we cut this away, we want to cut away not just this area in the rectangle, but since we have a rounded router bit, we want to be able to clear out these corners also. So we need a little bit of overhang. We need this rectangle to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make another one. Let's make that 2.75 wide. We'll make it 1.75 tall and let's use the position feature on this we're going to make that negative oh you know what that's uh we're going to change that anchor point i want to work off of this corner anchor and we're going to make that negative 0.125 in the x so that's nicely centered and we're going to make that 0.125 in the y also so we've got three shapes. This is all going to come together here in just a minute. We've got the tenon. We've got this guide rectangle, which just represents our stock. And we've got this bigger rectangle, which represents the pocket that we're going to cut away. Now, um, if I click on this, you can see it's going to cut away that tenon also if I were to pocket out that whole shape. So the last thing that I want to do here is subtract this tenon from this rectangle. So I'm going to shift select to click both of those at the same time. I'm going to come down here to Shape Shifter, and I'm just going to keep this shape. Um, and I'm going to keep existing shapes also, uh, which keeps those original rectangles and tenons. I'm going to make a shape. That's a pocket. Now let's do that Selection Manager again, because I want to get rid of that big rectangle while keeping this pocket. I'm going to turn off this one. That's our guide. I'm going to turn off this one. That's our tenon. And now I've got two shapes left. I want to turn off this one. That's the pocket that we want to keep. This is the pocket that we want to get rid of. Now I can delete that. Now I've got these three shapes that are exactly what I want. The tenon that we're going to do an outside cut on, this rectangle, which is just a guide, and this nice big pocket. What do you think, Jake? Perfect. Just for that, that internal rectangle and the location of that custom anchor point, just want to highlight that again. Mm -hmm. All that smaller rectangle is doing is going to be a guide for us to, so that when we line everything up, yeah. we can actually visually see on origin screen that our tenon shape is matching our stock shape. Everything's what we expect, and let's set that guide yeah. on Studio. Let's do it. So one of the beautiful things about Studio here is you can go over to plan mode and set the cut types for everything. So I'm going to select, let's see, this is that big oh no, no no this is the guide so it's set to an outside cut you can see it's highlighted in green and the cuts on the outside i'm going to change that to a guide so there's no cut this here is an online cut this big pocket and i'm going to change that actually to a pocket so we're going to clear out all of that area and it, it allows us to overhang that uh, the guide nicely and then i'm going to take this tenon this is already an outside cut um, the one thing that i do want to change here is what bit diameters are we working with here, Jake? Eight millimeter. Just want to visualize this. Eight millimeter. Does that conversion for you? With this pocket, we're going to go also 
eight millimeter. And because we can use encoded depths to transfer those depths from studio to origin, how deep do you want to cut? 1.25. All right, we'll do 1.25 on that pocket. And we'll do 1.25 on that outside cut. Now, if we go to review, that looks like a tenant. There it is. Okay, so this is automatically going to synchronize under the name Tenon Demo, which I have up here on the left side. Um, let's see what that looks like on Origin. I love that there's no physical save button. It just happens. You just it's always trust it. saving. It's always saving. How always many times have you forgotten to save something and lost your work, Jake? Too many. Too but many. But not with Shaper Studio. All right. As you see, we have the one and a half by two and a half piece of ash that we're going to cut our tenon into. I have made our grid by probing off of the back side of the material and the left side. This is where our reference pins are, and this is our clamping face. So these are unchanging surfaces. Just good practice, especially when cutting tenons, to always use these sides uh, when you're gridding. Hop into design, import, and right at the top of my list is the tenon demo. Zoom in a little bit, you can see that custom anchor point is right there on the corner of that guide. I'm just gonna drag and drop right at zero, zero. Perfect. Great, you wanna go ahead and cut that? Let's do it. Okay. Step off to the side here. Give Jake a little space so uh, we don't get blown out by the router noise, as always. It's gonna be a quick one. Yeah, so fill me in on what you're about to do here. You're gonna pocket at two depths? Yeah, split the pocket up into two, and then just go right into the finish cut on the tenon, because that's gonna leave, well, you know what, just for kicks and giggles, we use auto pass to work yeah. our way down. Okay, sure. Okay. So I know we kind of blew through that studio demo, but I want to reiterate what we're really doing here is uh, the trick is that we've made this pocket and the pocket allows us to hog out all of this tenon material without blowing away the tenon itself. So if you're in studio, you design a tenon of any shape, you design the bounding box of the pocket, then you use shape shifter to subtract the shape of the tenon from the shape of the bounding box you're going to be left with a pocket that excludes the tenon. So it's going to allow you to do a pocketing cut like this that Jake's doing on screen now, while not cutting into the tenon, preventing you from cutting into the tenon. So you can go back and do a nice outside pass on that tenon uh, and clean it up to get your perfect fit. Pocketing in end grain or, you know, routing in end grain in general allows you to go a lot deeper than we normally go. Um, so Jake's doing quite deep passes with this eight millimeter finishing router bit. Uh, one and a quarter divided by two is, I guess that's five eighths inch deep per pass, which is quite deep. Um, it's about double what we typically recommend, but these bits really slice through end grain very easily. Uh, basically, they're only cutting the grains themselves right at the stem, and uh, the grains are not really attached, you know, by anything other than a little bit of lignin uh, from side to side. So, much easier to make these cuts in end grain. Uh, and we really encourage you, if you're starting out with Origin, to experiment and see what you're comfortable with when you're making these cuts. Sometimes. You can cut deeper and faster than we suggest. Sometimes you might want to slow it down a little more. For example, the brass show that we did the other week, we definitely slow it down. And um, trial and error will get you a long way toward a good cut that you're comfortable with. I think that was the second tenon. Blink twice if yes. Or a second pocket. You're done already? Holy smokes, okay. I had more to say. And there we go. There you go. Okay. Ned says we should show that on the bench cam. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, look at that. We don't have a mortise to fit this into today. Dirty. We're just showing off with a quick tenon. 
Yeah, sorry, I got excited. I wanted to go deep on this one. Yeah. Um, I was just telling everyone how you can go deeper in end grain than you can yes. in edge grain. Right? Yes. You know, because you're, you're not cutting as much, really. Would, the fibers want to separate themselves. Would never think about doing that that deep <laughs> going into cross grain for the mortise, especially. So the mortise is a little slower. But with AutoPass, not that slow. Yeah. Uh, there you go. So that's a tenon. Um, we covered the custom anchor point kind of reiterated why you want to use Shapeshifter to make this tenon pocket. We got a little sneak peek into the selection manager, although we're going to copy that and do that again in the second half of the show. And before we go into product announcements, I want to show you a couple more quick things on the phone here. So I'm going to just pull up, no rush Ned, by the way, I'm pulling up this ten tenon demo file because, you know, it syncs across everything. <laughs> or I hope it's pulled up. Yeah, here we go. Yep, we're all set. So you can see we've got this Tenon demo uh, file that I did on the computer. You can also access that on your phone. Now there's two things that are new to, uh, well, one's for mobile, one's for everything. The For mobile specifically is mobile selection. So the new default for mobile selection is every time you touch, you add a new thing that you're clicking on, which can make it a lot easier to select stuff on the phone uh, especially when paired with the selection manager. So you can kind of over select and then hit that selection manager and either pair it back down or, you know, bring all those things back in, which is really nice. So small change to mobile selection on the phone. Now, the last thing is I'm going to zoom out. I can't even lose it. It used to be way worse, but I'm going to lose that design. Whoops, it's gone. We've got this great new button, zoom to selection, or when nothing is selected, it's going to zoom to fit everything or recenter, right? And that just brings that design right back onto the screen. If you're selecting a smaller part of your design, like this tenon, we're going to zoom to selection, and it centers right in on that tenon, which is cool if you're working with small letters or text or things like that. Yeah, this is huge. Anyone that's used any design software has gotten lost within the white space Yeah, a time or two. So being able to rehome. Yeah. So I'm going to reiterate two things. Let's pull that phone back up. New selection, tapping, defaults to adding things, um, and then selection manager is down here compared to up at the top for desktop, and then we've got zoom to fit or zoom to selection or recenter, kind of depending on how much you've you've selected there up in the top. Okay, that's three and a half. We'll call that three and a half features down. Perfect. <laughs> what do you say we take a little break and talk about uh, product announcements, things like that? Yeah. Where have we got? Well, let's, we first thing's poll. the poll question. Yes. So every show, for everybody who's watching live, we've got this poll question. At the end of the show, if you answer this poll that we're about to pop up, you're going to be entered into the giveaway. Today, we're going to give away some stuff. We haven't decided yet. How about a swag pack? I we haven't have done idea. a swag pack in a while. What's your idea? The five millimeter O flute. The five millimeter O flute. I had a renewed love for that thing today. Yeah, I used it yesterday to prepare for next week's session. Yeah, it and just. Crushes. I'm not going to spill the beans on what it is. We're cutting out an undermount sink in a countertop. <laughs> and I used that five millimeter O flute router bit for that, and that was yeah. really great. So just okay, let's give away a five millimeter O flute. Perfect. Um, and the question that should be on your screen is, how long did you know about Origin before purchasing? Yeah, we're doing you, a little market research. Yeah, we're curious. Uh, okay, great. And while that's up, we've got our typical product announcements. First, most obviously, Shaper Studio is this great design tool that we're always updating, and we're telling you about the updates today because we made updates recently, and we want to just reiterate that like we really appreciate everybody's support and hanging on for the ride this year while we've made and built this great tool. And we hope that you like everything that we've done. Yeah. We're happy to share new updates with you. Just like Origin, it's going to get better with time. Uh, that's it. That's kind of sappy. Yeah. Thing two is Trace is on track. Yes. That's not like a big update update, like nothing's changing, but Trace is on track. For everybody who backed Trace on Kickstarter or has pre-ordered it from our site. Thank you. Thank you. You can still do that. <laughs> and it's all still on track. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to do a Can You Trace It at the end of this little announcement segment. Love it. Cool. Uh, all right. More announcements. Uh, we've got a new master class that just dropped from Martin Winterhager. Yes. Um, this one's really fun. 
This one's German native, but we've got subtitles. And it's really, really cool. It's a completely different topic than any of the other master classes that we've done. This one is about surface finishing techniques, but not finishing like applying an oil to it. It's like surface texturing. Texturing, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Ned, we've got the video queued up, right? It's a little Just teaser. Just about ready for that. Yeah, let's pull up the video. Ned's going to pull up the video, and we're going to give you all a, a taste. Oberfläche ist wichtig, weil das ist das, was der Kunde als erstes wahrnimmt. Das ist das, was der Kunde sich wünscht, wenn er über sein Möbel spricht. Ich bin Martin Winterhager, ich bin Tischler und wir haben die Tischlerei Winterhager auf Mallorca. Winterhager besteht ja, aus zwei. Tina, meine Frau und mir. Was wir machen, ist Massivholz. Tischlerei auf höchstem Niveau. Unsere Arbeiten zeichnet aus, dass wir besonders Augenmerk auf sich wiederholende Designs legen, die quasi eine Handschrift gestalten, die wir immer wieder in unsere Möbel einbringen. In dieser Masterclass werde ich euch zwei Oberflächenstrukturierungen zeigen und dazugehörigen Oberflächenbehandlungen. Die Strukturierung ist der kreative Part. Da können wir gestalterisch uns ausleben. Und die Oberflächenbehandlung ist quasi das Finish, das Schützende. Das, wo es nicht darauf ankommt, kreativ zu sein, sondern akkurat zu arbeiten. Einmal werden wir mit der Bandsäge eine sägeraue Oberfläche erzeugen. Und einmal werden wir mit einem Winkelschleifer eine gedechselte Oberfläche herstellen. Dazugehörig werden wir dann die sägeraue Oberfläche räuchern und die gedechselte Oberfläche mit Eisenschwärze ebonisieren. Wer in die Oberflächengestaltung einsteigen möchte, muss vor allem experimentierfreudig sein und damit leben können, dass das ganz oft in die Hose geht am Anfang und sich nicht davon abschrecken lassen. Was zählt ist, dass es am Schluss gut aussieht. Wie man da hinkommt, ist egal. Kann man sich echt alles ausdenken. Very cool. That's just great. Yeah. And you can see that Martin is an incredible joiner and cabinet maker. And I think these surface treatments are just one more thing that you can put in your toolbox of knowledge that are going to step up your projects. Yep. And now you can find them all in one neat little location. Great segue, Jake. <laughs> yeah, let's pull up my laptop here. We've got a new Masterclass website. Um, the gist of this is that everything's free. All yes. of this Masterclass stuff is free. And we've got classes from, you can see Martin here, uh, Christoph Noy, who's a luthier guitar maker, Matt Kenny, Caleb James, and more. There's way more in this. Um, you sign up for Masterclasses at shapertools.com slash masterclass. Uh, and yeah, I mean, here's just a smattering of what's available. Roly Johnson, um, we've had a couple of these folks on sessions to talk, which has been great. And we're always adding to this. So the next person that we're adding, you've got a little sneak peek of him up here. We've got Daryl Peart, green and green master. Uh, his master class is going to be dropping like end of this month, beginning of next month is about what we're looking at. Yeah. We've got them scheduled to come on sessions at the end of September. So Dad, the master class is coming soon. Yes. Um, so excited for that. Super, super excited. He's going through the process for making this. We've been calling it the, what have we been calling it? The, the drum oh, stick. Green the green drum stick. stick. It's, <laughs> it's like a section of a table that has all of these intricate details in it. Um, and then he's going to be on sessions to talk. And here's my next segue. He's going to be at... So this is free, by the way. We're about to segue into something that's ticketed. Shapers Masterclass Live. We're so excited about this. So for Masterclass Live, this is November 10th and 11th in San Francisco. Here. Here. And at our HQ. <laughs> at Shaper headquarters. We are um, we're hosting three of our Masterclass instructors. We're hosting Matt Kenny. We're hosting Phil Morley. Mm -hmm. And we're hosting Daryl Peart. Uh, Matt is going to cover a drawing for woodworkers interactive yeah. session two hours um phil is going to do a demonstration on tambour doors 
two hours. Yep. Daryl is going to lead a workshop where everybody builds their own green and green. What's that thing called, Jake? It's a ribbon pole. It's a drawer pole or slide um, that has a beautiful organic shape to it. So very cool. Everybody's going to make one and yeah. take home their own ribbon pool that they make here with Daryl's hand finishing techniques and with Origin to route out a lot of the details. Um, two hours. Mm -hmm. We've got a two hour Origin fundamentals class with me and Jake the night before. Let's Tandem. Just, let's walk through the schedule. <laughs> yeah. So Friday night, Origin fundamentals class, drinks and snacks at Shaper headquarters in San Francisco. Saturday, three two-hour classes with Matt, Phil, and Daryl with catered breakfast, lunch, and dinner, yep. and Shaper swag, and you get $100 to the Shaper store when you buy this ticket. So it's really, instead of $399, it's $299. Yeah. Um, I could blabber about this forever because I'm excited about it. Oh, we're um, stoked on it. But yeah. you should all check out shapertools.com slash masterclass dash live. Yeah. That's where you find out the details about this. 60 spots. 60 spots. That's right. 60 spots total. And we're breaking that down into three groups of 20 that are going to rotate. So you're going to have an opportunity to interact with these instructors in groups of 20 max. And we're going to do rotating classes all day. So it's not like Daryl's actually teaching three classes. Matt's teaching three classes. Phil's teaching three classes. But everybody's going to kind of cycle through. It's awesome. It's, How's that sound? <laughs> I mean, that sounds pretty good to me. We're truly um, stoked to do it and to have people in our, in our headquarters. I mean, Yeah. Uh, check your calendars. Hope to see you there. Let's see. Okay. Enough about that. Let's go into our shop tour. If we don't move on, we won't finish the show. Let's do our shop tour. That's true. Okay. We've got a shop tour today from 3D DIY Dave, who we love. And he's got a really cool motorcycle at the end of this one. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Tis I, Dave from 3D DIY. And today, this is my shop tour. It's a single car garage. And here from the front, I made this cart that has uh, my drill stand. Uh, and this is where I keep my Shaper Origin accessories there. Uh, this drawer has uh, all the accessories for the drill. And on the side, I have the Shaper plate. And this side of the garage is kind of like my power tools. So I have uh, my table saw here, sanding. I got my Shaper workstation up there that I use with my MFT3 table, uh, some power tools, um, dust collection under here, uh, all goes to the table or goes to a Onefinity CNC that I have here. Uh, this actually whole thing here is a chimney as part of the other house. So it does come into the house a little bit and take up space, but it does have this uh, nook on the side here where I have storage that I made. I keep uh, spray paints and lacquers and up here is storage for extra stuff that I usually try not to show. Uh, here are some consumables, uh, stickers, gotta have stickers and the biggest banner of all there. And then my tool chest. Uh, this is where I kind of keep things I don't use too often, uh, but it's kind of messy in there, but I store it away and uh, so bottom half is all tools generally and the top half is kind of consumables and uh, PPE and stuff like that and that is my charging station. Uh, most of my clamps are on this wall as, all, as well as uh, over here for the longer ones. And then this is a workbench, uh, Paul Sellers design that I um, did after and recently installed these little pop up bench dogs that are kind of fun and uh my traditional this side of the wall is just traditional hand tools uh so uh everything here just doesn't really require power but i do have a kind of a hobby laser down here that i could pull out and then vent stuff out the window and then there's some storage up there for hand tool stuff oils 
And here is a uh, wood storage. Um, and I also share part of my garage with my motorcycle. Uh, and uh, it's a 1976 BMW. And I usually move this out when I get wood and stuff like that. And uh, normally, uh, yeah, this I didn't clean out for you guys. So there's stuff kind of all around. But this is kind of clean for not doing any projects at the moment. But there's uh, obviously some boxes and stuff. But yeah, single car garage. Hope you guys like it. That is epic, what you can do in a single car garage. It is epic. You know, Goose has that motorcycle just one year removed. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Same bike? Yeah. It's a beautiful bike. Beautiful awesome. Bike. Thank you so much for sending that to us. Uh, thanks for giving us a little glimpse into your space. We'll send Great. you something fun. Um, all right, let's roll into Can You Trace It? We've got an email here from Glenn, mm -hmm. regular sessions viewer. Um, I'm just going to read this. This is a replica of the famous Robert Indiana sculpture. I wonder if there's enough of a silhouette oh. here for Trace to reproduce the front face. Seems like a long shot. All the best, Glenn. It is a long shot, but we're going to show you how we would do it. Yeah. So let's pull this up. Here's that classic love sculpture. So let's start with a printing out the image just so yeah. we can put a nice piece of trace paper or vellum over the top of that. Mm -hmm. And hand select our front face, basically. So if you want to show the overhead real quick, might be hard to see, but just did that in, actually did it in pencil, mm -hmm. um, but made sure it was a nice bold line, continuous line. And let's trace it. There we go. Boom. Allow access. Bam. Oh, refreshing again. There we go. So we're showing here the outline. And we can eat just as easily switch over to the center line. Not bad. Not bad at all. So there you go, Glenn. Can you trace it? Yes, yes you, you can. can. You got to trace it first. Trace it and then trace it. Trace it to trace it. That's my recommendation. We've been doing a lot of these tracing paper or vellum drawings lately. And it's a nice way to just kind of tease out and select what you want. And then trace makes it super easy to capture that. Turn it into a cuttable SVG. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, Ned, I, I, think gonna, I think you were going to, I think you were going to roll the poll question back up too. Is that right? Okay. So that poll question for anybody who missed that poll question the first time, the poll question is back up by the nice. way. Okay. Um, while that's up, feel free to take your time with that. It's going to be up for like three minutes or so, but let's roll into the next demo. This is one that we've done before. This is a kind of classic compass rose flooring inlay, four points, a couple different pieces of wood, a little bit of contrast. Um, I'm going to rebuild it using the new tools that we have, which are mirror and the selection manager, which yep. are both really helpful. Make it uh, so much easier to do this. Yeah, it does make it, it makes it easier. Um, yeah, and we've done this a couple of times on sessions. So for anyone that this is old hat for, um, you're going to learn some new things with new tools. For anybody who this is new for, you know, check out any of our older studio sessions where you could see this demo in different ver variants. But we're going to start by making shapes. This is all triangle based. So let's make some triangles, three sided polygon. And uh, we're going to rotate this 180 degrees just because I like working with the top one first and uh, the trick with this is to start with a right triangle and to build a right triangle in studio we're going to make a triangle that is I don't know one inch wide and a half inch tall does that sound right Jake yeah this might not Actually, match yeah. exactly what we did pre-show to prep for this but the circle diameter is all going to come out the same so we've got this We've still got snap to grid on, so it's snapping to that grid. We've got that triangle right there. Perfect. Uh, cool. Let's build another triangle. Three sides. And in total, we want this thing to be, well, first off, we need to make it one inch wide. 
to match the bottom triangle. Now we can use that snapping to align everything. And we want everything to be, what circle diameter were we working with for this, Jake? Six inches? Oh, yes. I think it Actually, was six, six inches. I think it was six inches. So a half inch plus two and a half inches tall equals a three inch radius, which equals a six inch circle. That looks like exactly what we built earlier. Now, because we want uh, some contrast here, we're going to shape shift all this to make just one part. We'll do control A to select everything, go into shape shifter, and I just want this little spear here. And we're gonna mirror this all around our workspace to make the parts that we need. Make shape, there we go. Now this is what's cool. I'm going to duplicate that. Here's mirror, this is where mirror lives. We can mirror that horizontally, bam. Snapping makes it super easy. Control A to select everything. Duplicate. This one I'm going to mirror vertically. And I can drag that around till it snaps right there. I can select everything again. Duplicate again. Now this stuff I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. Drop it right there. Okay. There we go. That's pretty cool. And now I was zooming with the scroll wheel, but we can zoom to fit. That's really helpful. I got to get in the habit of that, but that's going to be really nice. And last but not least, we want a six inch diameter circle. Um, and to make all of the parts for this, so here's what's nice about Selection Manager also. You can take this and see all of the parts that you have. So I've got all these spears and one circle, but the thing that we're missing if we're going to make this an actual inlay are these four quadrants here. So we're going to take everything, control A, we're going to shape shift that. Um, let's see, I think if I do all four of these at once, it's going to make four new shapes. You know, I haven't actually run into this before. Interesting. Huh. Let's just do one at a time. Yeah. We'll keep existing shapes. We'll make a shape. We'll control A again. I'm going to selection manager. Here we go. Manage selection. Don't want to include that in my shape shift. I'm going to make that shape, keep all my shapes. Control A, selection manager. See, these are the shapes that we're building here for this inlay. And I'm selecting that circle and the spears. And you know, to learn something, I'm going to shape shift and I'm going to try to make both of these at once. Let's see if it makes one shape or two. Good call. I'm going to keep existing shapes still. Make shape. That's just one shape, I think. Yeah. That's one shape. We're going to undo that. Okay, let's do this again. So that did just make one shape. We're going to make one more shape here. Keep existing. And what keep existing shapes does is it keeps all this original circle and the spears and all of these shapes that I haven't been using. Selection manager, deselect these three, shape shift. I want to make that last one. Keep all these existing shapes. I'm going to show you what happens if I don't keep the existing shapes. How about that for a quick okay. lesson? Make shape. See all that stuff disappeared? So let's do that again. Deselect these three. Shape shift here. Keep those existing shapes. Make shape. And now if I control A on all this again and manage that selection, I can see I've got all of these inlay pieces. I've got these four bigger inlay pieces. And I've got this circle that's going to be a big pocket that Jake's going to cut out. Um, I want to break that circle out for you so that you can just drop that in and not have to worry about all these extra shapes. Please. What do you think about that? So I've got this all selected. Um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this design and I'm going to call this flooring inlay pocket. Okay. And now there are a couple of ways to do what I'm about to do. But uh, the way that I like to do it with the selection manager is, again, I've selected everything. I'm going to go into that selection manager. I'm going to deselect the thing that I want to keep, hit delete, and that gets rid of everything else. Perfect. There we go. So this is going to be that circle that goes with that design that you're going to cut on origin. And now let's do that plan real quick. 
We're going to pocket this. How deep were these pieces? 0.2. 0 0.2. 0 .2. No offset. You're going to cut this with a 16 millimeter router bit, which is beefy. Review. I mean, it looks like a circle. There what can I say? Yeah. Okay, and that covers Mirror and the Selection Manager. Nice, and just because it's awesome, uh, all those little pieces that we did cut, I'll show you on the origin screen. We went ahead and cut beforehand, but that's what we were, that's what Russ just created. Mm -hmm. They come together perfectly. Super nice. All right, let's all pocket right, it's a big hole. Pocket. Import. By the way, I'm just working on some plywood here, but we're going to pretend it's a floor for today. <laughs> I have my pie wedges numbered so the grain is all going the same direction. Genius. So I made sure to cut these all out of the same piece. Did I lose Wi-Fi? There we go. Anytime I'm cutting inlays, I, as soon as I peel it up, I mark the, what the back of that inlay is. And I usually have the piece that I want showing uh, facing upwards. Okay. Yeah. All right. You want me to grab you a USB stick? If you got one handy. Mm, I don't, but I'll find one. <laughs> is there one over by your desk? This is for all you folks at home who uh, don't, have, don't have Wi-Fi in your shop. We are so spoiled here at Shaper HQ. We've got Wi-Fi here. We're, so, uh, we're too used to it. But you can always transfer files to Origin with your USB stick. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to drop this right there. And it's just a big pocket. I'm going to start from the very center of my pocket and kind of spiral my way out. Let's get cutting. Here we go. Now, the direction that Jake is spiraling also is important. Um, you want to make sure that when you're pocketing with Origin, you're cutting what we call conventional cutting. That is, you're working against the rotation of the router bit. If you're working with the rotation of the router bit, just like any plunge router, it has a tendency to, you know, grab and get away from you. But if you're working against the rotation of the spin of that router bit, then you're going to be uh, more resistant to grabs and things like that. You're always going to be pushing against. When in pocketing mode, Origin's going to work just like a standard plunge router when you're in the center of that pocket. And then as you reach the boundary of that pocket, it's going to kick in with that autocorrect, preventing you from overcutting that pocket. And with pocketing mode, this is something that trips up new folks a lot of the time, so I want to make sure we uh, touch on this. In pocketing mode, there is a built-in offset so that when you're pocketing out rough and heavy, um, you don't accidentally overcut into what you want that final line to be. So typically what we do is we do this pocketing with the built-in roughing offset. And then when we go into our inside cut um, for a pocket, then that takes you right to the actual line of your cut file. Looks like Jake's switching to that inside cut right now. And you can see that crosshatch pattern is being replaced with a dotted line. That dotted line is going to be what Jake follows for this inside cut. Um, and that gray area around the dotted line is the area that's being removed. Uh, you can see that that gray area goes right up to the boundary of that cut template file, that cut file that was imported from Shaper Studio. Um, whereas in pocketing mode, the gray area that defined 
the actual cut that was happening didn't quite reach that line because of that built-in offset. All right, and there we are. So I went ahead and just immediately put in a negative eight thou offset because I did a test cut prior and I know that I needed to open this up eight thousandths of an inch. Always do a test cut. Always do a test cut. <laughs> Ned says somebody asked that, right, as we were saying that. That's kind of freaky. Well, you know, I always like to cut to zero and try to test fit and show that you use, you need to take a negative offset. Yeah. But with all these fiddly little parts, it's not as yeah. It's not as fun for me. Yeah. And it's kind of two different workflows, like sneaking up on it on the real thing, or do a nice test on a separate piece before the main event. You know, if you're a flooring installer, you want to do that test before the main event, so that when you go on the job site, you know exactly what offset you need for everything to fit. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, warning. <laughs> now, I numbered these just to make my life a little easier. Yes, please. We got Overhead two. Overhead cam, here we go. Got one. Main reason was, again, to keep that grain running same direction. Genius. It's Three. all about the details, folks. And four. All right. That's great. Now is your opportunity to figure out what is north and south. <laughs> so you can still kind of spin it. All right. Now it's easier to, these are two separate pieces still, but it's easier to put them in together. And it, with any time you're doing an inlay and you have multiple parts, it is always the last part that goes in where you're like, ah. <laughs> oh my tolerance. There's that <laughs> snug fit. Yeah. There it is. Found it. Um, for these positive pieces, too, anytime I have multiple pieces coming together, I like to put a negative offset on these, but I did a negative one thousandth of an inch, 0 0.001. Just something. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Here it is. Pardon my head. There you go. There it is. Oh, look at that. Would you look at that? Now that is ready to go into somebody's home. Beautiful. That's the show. That's it. That's Thanks all we for got. joining us. Have a good night. Bye-bye.